Well, good morning, and thank you for joining us. The executive order signed by the President earlier today, protecting the nation from foreign terrorist entry into the United States, is a vital measure for strengthening our national security. It is the President's solemn duty to protect the American people. And with this order, President Trump is exercising his rightful authority to keep our people safe. As threats to our security continue to evolve and change, common sense dictates that we continually reevaluate and reassess the systems we rely upon to protect our country. While no system can be made completely infallible, the American people can have high confidence we are identifying ways to improve the vetting process and thus keep terrorists from entering our country. To our allies and partners around the world, please understand this order is part of our ongoing efforts to eliminate vulnerabilities that radical Islamist terrorists can and will exploit for destructive ends. The State Department will coordinate with other federal agencies and implement these temporary restrictions in an orderly manner. Our embassies and consulates around the world will play an important role and making sure that our nation is as secure as it can be. And the State Department will implement the provisions in this order that allow for the admissions of refugees when it is determined they do not pose a risk to the security or welfare of the United States. Upon the President's initial executive order issued on January the 27th, the State Department's consular affairs and diplomatic security offices immediately undertook a review in coordination with the Department of Homeland Security to identify additional measures that would strengthen our vetting of those seeking entry to the United States from seven named countries. These early efforts were concentrated on Iraq. Iraq is an important ally in the fight to defeat ISIS, with their brave soldiers fighting in close coordination with America's men and women in uniform. This intense review over the past month identified multiple security measures that the State Department and the government of Iraq will be implementing to achieve our shared objective of preventing those with criminal or terroristic intent from reaching the United States. I want to express my appreciation to Prime Minister al-Abadi of Iraq for his positive engagement and support for implementing these actions. The United States welcomes this kind of close cooperation with countries in every region of the world who share our commitment to national security. This revised order will bolster the security of the United States and her allies. Now we've spent the morning briefing the Congress, the press, and we will continue to talk with key stakeholders this afternoon. Experts from the Department of Homeland Security, the Department of Justice, and the State Department hosted an hour-long call with the media on this topic this morning. Our collective teams will continue throughout the day to follow up with the Congress, the media, and stakeholders to answer your questions. I'll now turn it to the Attorney General for his comments. Thank you, Mr. Secretary, and good morning to all of you. One of the Justice Department's top priorities is to protect the United States from threats to our national security. Therefore, I want to discuss two points. First, the national security basis of this order, and second, the Department of Justice's role in defending the lawful orders of the President of the United States. First, as President Trump noted in his address to Congress, the majority of people convicted in our courts for terrorism-related offenses since 9-11 came here from abroad. We also know that many people seeking to support or commit terrorist acts will try to enter through our refugee program. In fact, today more than 300 people, according to the FBI, uh, who came here as refugees are under an FBI investigation today for potential terrorism-related activities. Like every nation, the United States has a right to control who enters our country and to keep out those who would do us harm. This executive order seeks to protect the American people as well as lawful immigrants by putting in place an enhanced screening and vetting process for visitors from six countries. Three of these nations are state sponsors of terrorism. 
The other three have served as safe havens for terrorist countries, countries where governments have lost control of their territory to terrorist groups like ISIL or Al-Qaeda and its affiliates. This increases the risk that people are admitted here from these countries may belong to terrorist groups or may have been radicalized by them. We cannot compromise our nation's security by allowing visitors entry when their own governments are unable or unwilling to provide the information we need to vet them responsibly, or when those governments actively support terrorism. This executive order responsibly provides a needed pause we can, so we can carefully review how we scrutinize people coming here from these countries of concern. Second, the Department of Justice believes that this executive order, just as the first executive order, is a lawful and proper exercise of presidential authority. This Department of Justice will defend and enforce lawful orders of the President consistent with the core principles of our Constitution. The executive is empowered under the Constitution and by Congress to make national security judgments and to enforce our immigration policies in order to safeguard the American public. Terrorism is clearly a danger for America and our people. The President gets briefings on these dangers and emerging threats on a regular basis. The federal investigative agencies, the intelligence community, the Department of State, the Department of Homeland Security, and the United States military report to the President. Knowing the President would best possess such extensive inf information, our founders wisely gave the executive branch the authority and the duty to protect the nation. This executive order is a proper exercise of that power. Now, I will turn things over to our able Secretary John Kelly of the Department of Homeland Security. John. Thank you, Mr. Attorney General. Well, like the uh, Secretary of State and the Attorney General, I welcome you here today. Uh, my comments will be relatively brief. Last week, the Department of Homeland Security celebrated its 14th anniversary, first opening its doors on 1 March 2003. This uh, secretariat was established in response to the devastating attacks of September 11th, when foreign terrorists turned a beautiful but ordinary day into a nightmare. Those attacks taught us that we could not take our nation's security for granted, that homeland security must be our top priority and that we needed to overcome our collective inability to take the, to connect the dots of intelligence and arrange them into a more comprehensive picture of the threats posed to America and our way of life. Though much has changed over the past 14 years, both in the world that is more dangerous and at DHS, which is much better. The fact remains that we are not immune to terrorist threats and that our enemies often use our own freedoms in generosity against us. Today's executive order, which President Trump signed this morning, will make America more secure and address long overdue concerns about the security of our immigration system. We must undertake a rigorous review and are undertaking a rigorous review of our immigration vetting programs to increase our confidence in the decisions we make relative to visitors and immigrants that travel to the United States. We cannot risk the prospect of malevolent actors using our immigration system to take American lives. This executive order is prospective in nature. Its focus is on preventing the entry of new foreign nationals from the six designated countries. Accordingly, it is important to note that nothing in this executive order affects existing lawful permanent residents or persons with current authorization to enter our homeland. Unregulated, unvetted travel is not a universal privilege, especially when national security is at stake. The White House worked closely with the Department of Homeland Security, the Department of Justice, and the Department of State to create an order that addresses previous concerns and protects the homeland and every one of our citizens. The men and women of the Department of Homeland Security, like their brothers and sisters throughout law enforcement, are decent men and women of character and conscience. They are no less so than the governors of our states and territories of our senators and members of Congress. 
of our city mayors and various advocacy groups. These men and women are sworn to enforce the laws as passed by the United States Congress and would be in violation of the law in their sworn oaths if they did not do so. We do not make the law, but are sworn to enforce it. We have no other option. We are going to work closely to implement and enforce it humanely, respectfully, and with professionalism, but we will enforce the law. I want to thank the President for his leadership on this issue and for his steadfast support for our important law enforcement, security, and counterterrorism mission. Again, as previously mentioned, I have spent much of the day today on the phone with members of Congress, the leadership, explaining the ins and outs of this EO, and I did the same thing last week. So there should be no surprises, whether it's in the media or on Capitol Hill. Thanks very much, uh, and thanks for your time. Is this um, an acknowledgment that the first order was flawed in many ways and not well thought through? Mr. Attorney General, have you spoken to FBI Director Comey today? Are um, Christians still given priority under this executive order for review? Uh, 